was there about is no national conspiracy to buy elections and control America. You don't need a formal conspiracy right. when interests converge. These people went to the same universities oh, and please. fraternities. They're on it's, the same yeah, boards of directors. They're on the same country clubs. They have like interests. They yes. don't need to call a meeting. They know what's good for them. It's and they're getting it. And there, there used to be seven oil companies. There are now three. It will soon Ooh. be two. The things that matter in this country have been reduced in choice. There are two political parties. Parties. There are a handful of insurance companies. There are about six or seven inf information things. But if you want a bagel, there are 23 flavors because you have the illusion. You have the illusion of choice. Right. Let's play a game. What game do you want to play? How about Monopoly? Well, by trademark, the definition of Monopoly is a board game in which players engage in simulated property and financial dealings using imitation money. But Monopoly as a noun, is the exclusive possession or control of the supply of or trade in a commodity or service. Which one would you guys like to play? Well, you're in real life, so you're playing the noun version. And guess what? You can't win because you can't play. Who are the major players in this world? You ask. Wouldn't you like to know, broke boy? You can't even, you don't have billions. You, don't, you think you have a say in what you get to eat, what you get to drink, what companies own this and what they're doing to the food and the chemicals? Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, P&G, Nestle, Kraft Heinz, Johnson & Johnson. Just a few companies that own everything. Wouldn't you like to own something? You can own your house, maybe. It's on a loan, paying it off in 35 years, if you can. But why do I say... We live in a monopoly. Just by the example I gave you, those companies own about anything that you could think of. And then you have companies like the ones who run the oil industry. For instance, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia produces almost most of the oil. And what do they do to create the prices? They have almost an unlimited amount of oil. But what they do is they develop all these factories or oil factories and they shut some of them down because they produce too much oil and then they will produce 100 million barrels a year. And if you think about it, the prices that we have now are all based around what they determine it to be. Now, that's how businesses work, but... I am completely convinced that these companies could sell it at 70 cents a gallon and still make money. But greed got them. Then you have companies like Bechtel. Bechtel had its hands in the government during the Bush administration. And when Bush heavily attacked Iraq and bombed their water production facilities, the Bush administration awarded Bechtel a $680 million contract to rebuild Iraq's water system. And you would think, okay, the next contract they give would be to another company. No, when you're monopolized, you get the next contract. And Bechtel loves water, so they got their hands in the privatization of the water in Bolivia. The government of Dictator Hugo Banzer promised that it would create better economic conditions for big companies in Bolivia. But part of this plan was privatizing the nation's water. And guess what happened? Bechtel was one of the front runners. And when greed hits the fan, individuals were pay spending a quarter of their income on water. So for every dollar that they made, 25% went to the water bill. Then you have BlackRock, an investment company. What are they investing in? Everything. As of December, BlackRock manages more than $10 trillion in assets. And what does this create? It creates an all-powerful, all-funding board of directors from BlackRock that determine what's going to happen with all these companies. And for example... They're not owned, but they own a percentage of the company, which means that they're at the board of directors. The big B table, you know, little long table, suits on, quaaludes on the table, a little bit of 
nose candy, whatever they do, the rich people, I don't know. But BlackRock has a stake in Exxon, Verizon, Microsoft, Amazon, PayPal, Walmart, Facebook, Netflix, CNN, Fox News. Ooh, whoa, CNN, Fox News. Two competing news channels, but they have a stake in both. Controlled opposition. Uh Uh-oh. There's just a lot of more companies that they own that I don't even want to discuss. And I don't mean own in a sense where they own and own it and it's theirs. But when you have that big of a stake, you have that big of a say in the company. So why is the Monopoly game hard to live in? Well, there's a few companies that determine everything. They determine the price. They determine when this is going to happen. They determine when there's a shortage in products and they determine if other companies are able to thrive in the market. And if they don't like what a company is doing, they'll just invest in it, fire all the board of directors, and then hire their own people and call all the shots. So what do you guys think? Do you think we'll ever get out of Monopoly? Or is it too late and we're inside the game and we're going to die poor?